As Marshal of the University, it is my honour to declare open the proceedings of the 526th Convocation of the University of Chicago and to introduce the University's 13th President, Robert J. Zimmer. Please be seated. Good afternoon and welcome. As the Marshal has just announced, today's ceremony is the 526th time that the University of Chicago has assembled for a convocation. These convocations allow students to be recognized and celebrated for their achievements after completion of their studies and to do so through formal exercises. The primary purpose of convocation is, of course, to award degrees. But these occasions satisfy other objectives as well. At convocation number one, on January 2nd, 1893, the university's first president, William Rainey Harper, set out goals for these ceremonies, goals leading to practices that we continue to observe. Harper believed these occasions of high ceremony to be a necessary and nourishing part of the life of a university and intended them to literally call together or cause to assemble all parts of the university community. In Harper's words, convocations are meant to bind together into a unity the many complex and diverging forms of activity which constitute our university's life and work. Today's ceremony then is also about about reflecting upon the whole of what we do across the many libraries, laboratories, and classrooms that make up our campus. And in addition, it affords us all a moment to reflect upon the accomplishments of our past and the opportunities for our future, individually, collectively, and institutionally. I confer the degrees awarded this afternoon by virtue of the authority delegated to me by the university's board of trustees, represented today by trustee Mary Lou Gorno. And I do so on behalf of the faculty of the University of Chicago that has responsibility for the educational programs just completed. I again welcome you to the 526th convocation a time-honored ritual that recognizes achievements of which we can all be proud. As provost of the University of Chicago, it is my privilege to introduce John Karlstrom, who will present today's convocation address. He is the Subramanian Chandrasekhar Distinguished Professor, Service Professor and Professor in the Department of Astronomy and Astrophysics, the Department of Physics, the Enrico Fermi Institute, and the College. Professor Karlstrom is one of today's foremost experimental astrophysicists. The many instruments and experiments he has devised have led to major advancements in modern cosmological theory. Professor Karlstrom examines the relic radiation from the Big Bang to formulate a better understanding of the evolution of the universe and the properties of dark matter and dark energy. He leads a global collaboration of 15 institutions as principal investigator on the South Pole Telescope Until recently, he also led the Sunyad Zeldovich Array at the Owens Valley Radio Observatory in California. For his work on advancing a new model of the universe, Professor Karlstrom shared the 2015 Gruber Cosmology Prize. His other honors include election to the National Academy of Sciences and the American Academy of Arts and Sciences. Uh, He's a MacArthur Fellow and a Packard Fellow and the Magellanic Premium of the American Philosophical Society. Professor Karlstrom has been a member of the University of Chicago faculty since 1995. The title of his talk today is Our Expanding View of the Universe. John. Well, thank you. Uh, Thank you very much. It's an honor to be the speaker at the 526th Convocation of the University of Chicago. Uh, Welcome students, friends, family, Welcome. I first want to start, of course, with congratulations to the graduates. You will soon receive your well-earned degree from the University of Chicago. Several years ago, you seized an extraordinary opportunity, and through your hard work, perseverance, find yourself here today. Not many have the opportunity or the ability to do what you have done, and you know it wasn't easy. Many have invested in you, none more than you have yourself, and I thank you. We all thank you for that. 
What have you learned? Well, you've learned a lot beyond the facts that you probably will forget soon. You have learned how to learn. You learned the value of learning. Uh, you have learned how to think. This is hopefully giving you a deeper appreciation of life uh, and giving you more opportunities to be inspired. You are ready to explore and to contribute. You're ready to seek your path wherever it may lead you. Frankly, this took me a long time. In fact, I'm still kind of working on that. Uh, but then again, I didn't have the benefit of a University of Chicago uh, education. Today, I want to tell you a few stories. I'm going to start with a vague memory, just to remind my, myself even. I had a vague memory of my father coming home from work once and saying he heard a news story where on the news that they said that scientists had heard the universe being created. I don't remember too much of that, but it, somehow I buried that deep inside. I also remember my mother, who was taking night courses uh, to get her degree at the time, coming home and telling us about what she learned in classes. I especially remember her telling us about the stars, about galaxies, about space, and Einstein's outrageous, it seemed to us, theories. Uh, it was a lot of fun to try to get our heads around this. Space and time weren't fixed. They could be curved, they were immutable, they were relative, uh, there were black holes. Uh, it was a lot of fun, but it was very inspiring. All right. These are uh, strange ideas to us, of course. Uh, they're far from our everyday experience. But Einstein was a clear thinker. Einstein was able to distinguish and separate what was known to be fact by observation and what was just assumed to be real. Right? Taking that and taking what was the result of experiments at the time, observations of the universe, led him to these really incredible and unimaginable or outrageous, people would think, insights in how the universe worked. And we now know those insights and his results were true. Our Chandra Sekhar here at the University of Chicago was also a masterful thinker. He showed how the death of massive stars would turn into black holes at a time when most people didn't believe there were such things. I am lucky, indeed privileged, all these many years later to be studying the universe. That news story my father heard must have been about the discovery of what's called the cosmic microwave background. This is a, a, an a discovery made by two Bell Lab scientists. They had found that there was a glow of light. The universe was glowing with light in all directions. It was light that was at very long wavelengths, what we call radio waves, in which you can't see with your eyes. And as a result, I suspect that's why it got confused in the story to be hearing the universe rather than seeing the universe. They had discovered the very first light in the universe, the fossil light from the hot Big Bang that has been traveling to us for nearly 14 billion years. This cosmic microwave background, their background radiation is an amazing thing. It provides us with a glimpse and actually the ability to view and see the early universe 14 billion years ago to a time before stars had even formed. It gave us, the discovery expanded our view of the universe and gave us a tool to discover it. That's the tool I use this day. Some of you, the undergraduates, may remember in phi psi classes measuring the cosmic microwave background using instrumentation very similar to what Penzias and Wilson used. Bob Wilson actually called me once and said, how do you do that? How is it that you have undergraduates at the University of Chicago measure the cosmic microwave background? We want to do that at Harvard. That call made my day, I can tell you. Uh, it has taken decades, however, using ever more sensitive telescopes and sensors to go beyond the detection of the cosmic microwave background to actually develop baby pictures of our universe with enough sensitivity that we can see these very faint features in the early universe. All right. And we have done that. The most detailed images come from the University of Chicago-led South Pole Telescope. It's located on the driest desert on Earth, the high and cold Antarctic Plateau. Uh, it's there to take advantage of the exceptionally clear skies. Working at the South Pole is really fascinating. You know, it's cold. Probably you knew that. It's actually colder than Chicago. Maybe you didn't know that. Except for one or two days a year when we find that actually it's reversed. Uh, but usually it's quite cold. The most inspiring thing, also I should also point out, the views are just amazing. It's, it's uh, like something you've never seen, just ice, snow, beautiful. Um, but the most inspiring thing is not the views, it's the people. There's about 200 people at the research station during the Austral summer, about three months. And then only a handful, 50 at most, decide to spend the night, the long winter night there. 
uh, and they keep it going. They keep it going, and for nine months, they cannot leave the station or come in. It's closed off. Right? There's no physical access whatsoever. They all work together, they have a common purpose, and they all have a part to play. They share in the discoveries, which would not be possible without them. They are inspired, and they're inspiring. So what have we learned? Well, a great deal. We have figured out what stuff makes up the universe, and amazingly, the stuff we know about, the stuff you can find in your textbooks, is a whopping few percent, four percent. We know the other stuff is there, we even give it names. We give it names that, that, that inform, are informative of our knowledge of it. We call it dark energy and dark matter. Um, clearly, there's a lot more to discover uh, and, and to learn. So we make these baby pictures, but what do they look like? And the truth is, they look like noise. But if you're educated and you can appreciate this noise, the noise is exactly that that would be predicted. It's beautiful. It's exactly that would be predicted by quantum mechanics. In fact, what they are a picture of is quantum fuzz. This quantum fuzz, which rules physics on the scales that are unimaginably small, has somehow been expanded to the astronomical scales and to give the seeds of all the structure in the universe, including, ultimately, us. Right? Our alumni, Carl Sagan, famously said, we are star stuff referring to the fact that most of the elements that we are made out of were first made in stars. We can now say we are quantum fluctuations. I agree it's not quite as, as it might not sell as well, but it's an amazing fact, or it appears to be a fact, that we are the result of quantum fluctuations all that long time ago. Let me tell you another story. Roughly a billion years ago, in a galaxy far, far away, two black holes, like the type predicted by Chandra Sekhar, began a death spiral, orbiting each other closer and closer. The extreme gravity of each hole warped and distorted the space-time around it and dragged it with it. Uh, and as they circled each other, the fabric of space itself emitted waves, what we call gravitational waves. Those gravitational waves spread out, propagated through the universe, moving at the speed of light, and carried away energy. The black holes then collided, losing energy, collided, I mean, uh, uh, spiraled in even closer to their ultimate inevitable catastrophic collision. In a fraction of a second before they collided, moving at a relative velocity close to the speed of light, they emitted a final burst of gravitational waves, gravitational waves that Einstein predicted. Those waves carried off more power during that brief time than all the light emitted by all the stars in the universe. They then merged into a single black hole, with a mass about 60 times the mass of the sun. Now that was one hell of an event. 40 years ago, scientists began to develop a method to try to detect gravitational waves uh, with a bold, some might say even outrageous, goal of using them as a way to observe the universe. They needed to figure out how to measure the ridiculously small and fleeting changes in space and geometries uh, introduced by the passing of a gravitational wave. So what is ridiculously small? Well, it's a part in 10 to the 21. One with 21 zeros followed it. So that's as if your gravity wave went through, it's as if your toes got closer to your head by a dimension of one trillionth the size of an atom. And then vibrated back and forth at maybe 100 hertz, a frequency which you could hear, if it was loud enough, uh, uh, for a fraction of a second. So another way of looking at that is if you take the distance to nearest star, not our sun, but let's say Alpha Centauri at 4.4 light years, it's the change in distance over that great distance of the width of a human hair. An incredibly hard and difficult thing to do, and many thought impossible. To attempt these measurements, over a thousand scientists from 15 countries carefully and meticulously refined what's known as interferometry. It's a technique pioneered a century earlier by Michelson, a great Chicago physicist. They use what's called a Michelson interferometer to measure precise distances and, uh, by bouncing laser light off four kilometer distant, heavily stabilized mirrors. After solving problem after problem, challenge after challenge, last fall they reached the stage where they had sufficient sensitivity to hope to make a detection. And it was just in time. They turned their machines on, four days later, those gravitational waves from that merging black hole a billion years ago reached Earth, passed through Earth, and set off their detectors. 
We all heard about this on February 11th. The whole world learned about it on February 11th. We heard this story directly from our colleagues who were part of the discovery team, Professor Dan Holtz and his students. That is the same Dan Holtz that the undergraduates nominated last year for a Quantrell Excellence in Undergraduate Teaching Award, and of course he received it. Once again, our view of the universe has expanded with a new tool to expand, uh, uh, explore it. In many ways, we are now actually hearing the universe. When I got home that day, I told my children all about it. Astronomers will now begin to investigate the properties of black holes directly and their role in the evolution of the universe. Maybe decades from now, your children will be measuring gravitational waves in a FISI lab at the University of Chicago. There is one more incredibly energetic event, the most energetic event in the history of our universe, which is the birth of our universe. Our model of the universe, which fits all the existing data so well, predicts that in the first fraction of a second after the Big Bang, and by that I mean 10 to the minus 35 seconds, is what my colleague Michael Turner refers to as a jiffy. Uh, so in one jiffy, uh, gravitational waves, a whole background of distorted space-time should have been produced and, and left as a background. We believe we know how to see that background now by making incredibly sensitive, some say outrageously so, measurements of the cosmic background. And if we find them, we can then use them to explore our origins. We're starting the experiment. We have already have hundreds of scientists from across the globe coming together. And hopefully you will not have to wait too long to hear about the results. But when you do, please tell your children. So what is the message behind these stories? Well, you can use your exceptional education, dare I say privileged education, to make a difference in whatever you choose to do. Please be bold. Know that people working together can achieve great, even seemingly impossible things. Go and make a difference. We're counting on you to do that. In closing, let me again congratulate you and thank you for all your hard work. Many thanks to your families and supporters. Keep learning and teaching. Be inspired and inspire. Whatever you choose to do, do it well. Share your story and please come back and tell us about it. Thank you.
As we begin the presentation of degrees, may I call your attention to the award of honors listed in the convocation program, as well as the names of candidates receiving degrees today in absentia. At this time, in the favoring presence of the congregation here assembled, the deans of several faculties or their appointed representatives will present the candidates for academic degrees to the president of the university. The dean of the college will now present candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts or Bachelor of Science in programs in the college. Mr. President, these students have completed the prescribed program of undergraduate studies. On behalf of the faculty of the college, I now have the honor to present them as candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts or Bachelor of Science. By virtue of the authority delegated to me, I confer upon you the degree of Bachelor of Arts or Bachelor of Science and welcome you to the Fellowship of Educated Individuals. Edward Vincent Barrett IV. Douglas Spencer Brown. Carly Parvin Ismali. Leah Clara Gimbel. Philip Yung Hung Han. Jasmine Marguerite Hebel. Angela Lam. Song Wan Lee. Jacob Joffrey de Loya. Ching Rui Jessica Lo. Nicholas Ivan Lukach, Daniel Matthew Matham, Christina Merlo, Jason Brian Mitchell, Sarah Catherine Nodars, Denise Chem Ozenshe, Anthony Chen Pan, Teresa H. Peng, Mariah Lee Rost, Jason Donald Rowley, Elizabeth May Sartain, Michael Richard Sheldon, Benjamin Mark Shenwick, Sheng Yi Tsai, Jan Igorevich Vinarski. The Dean of the Graham School of Continuing Liberal and Professional Studies will now present candidates for the degrees of Master of Liberal Arts and Master of Science in programs in the Graham School. Mr. President, this student has completed the program of studies prescribed by the faculty of the Graham School of Continuing Liberal and Professional Studies. I have the honor to present him as a candidate for the degree of Master of Liberal Arts. You have successfully completed a program of advanced study in the liberal arts, and by virtue of the authority delegated to me, I confer upon you the degree of Master of Liberal Arts and I express the hope that your learning will lead you to advance knowledge in or enrich the practice of your chosen field. Stephen Warohio. <clears throat> Mr. President, these students have completed the program of studies prescribed by the faculty of the Graham School of Continuing Liberal and Professional Studies. I have the honor to present them as candidates for the degree of Master of Science. You have successfully completed a program of advanced study in your profession, and by virtue of the authority delegated to me, I confer upon you the degree of Master of Science, and I express the hope that your learning will lead you to advance knowledge in or enrich the practice of your chosen field. I'm Borish Baruha. Rika Baruha, Chokan Bektaganov, Jonathan Berthet, Dapish Raj Bhatia, 
Rashmi Boga, Akshay Chabra, Jeffrey James Dougherty, Anish Gera, Vinodhi Kumar Gunig Sekarin, Robert Brandon Harris, Alexander Kenneth Cooley Huba, Patrick Keith Kelly, Wendy Marsh Klusendorf, Leonardo Oscar Kovaleski, Richa Kumari, Krishna Mohan Prasan Mumindi, Ryan Pastrovich, Lawrence Hernandez Salud, Jonathan Douglas Williams, Rayut Yaniv, Yuji Zhu. The Dean of the Division of the Biological Sciences and the Pritzker School of Medicine will now present candidates for the degree of Master of Science and candidates for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy in programs in the Division of the Biological Sciences and the Pritzker School of Medicine. Mr. President, these students have completed the program of studies pre prescribed by the Faculty of the Division of the Biological Sciences and the Pritzker School of Medicine and the special programs approved by their departments. I now have the honor to present them as candidates for the degree of Master of Science. You have successfully completed a program of advanced study in the biological sciences. And by virtue of the authority delegated to me, I confer upon you the degree of Master of Science, and I express the hope that your learning will lead you to advance knowledge in or enrich the practice of your chosen field. John Chell. Anna Chen. Lindsay Michelle Ludwig. Erin Marie McCauley. Ashley Dawn Sample. Mr. President, each of the students I now present has attained scholarly distinction in advanced studies and has prepared a dissertation that contributes to knowledge in a particular field of research. On behalf of the faculty of the Division of the Biological Sciences and the Pritzker School of Medicine, I have the honor to present them as candidates for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. By virtue of the authority delegated to me, I confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Philosophy and welcome you to this ancient and honorable company of scholars. Taylor Josephine Feely. Benjamin Alec Marcus. Shannon Lee Wolfman. The Dean of the Division of the Humanities will now present candidates for the degrees of Master of Arts and Doctor of Philosophy in programs in the Division of the Humanities. Mr. President, this student has completed the program of studies prescribed by the faculty of the Division of the Humanities <clears throat> and the special program approved by his department. I have the honor to present him as a candidate for the degree of Master of Arts. You have successfully completed a program of advanced study in the humanities, and by virtue of the authority delegated to me, I confer upon you the degree of Master of Arts, and I express the hope that your learning will lead you to advance knowledge in or enrich the practice of your chosen field. Taylor Michael Dimke. Mr. President, 
Each of the students I now present has attained scholarly distinction in advanced studies and has prepared a dissertation that contributes to knowledge in a particular field of research. On behalf of the faculty of the Division of the Humanities, I now have the honor to present them as candidates for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. By virtue of the authority delegated to me, I confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Philosophy and welcome you to this ancient and honorable company of scholars. Christine Marie Larison. James Matthew Nemiroff. The Dean of the Division of the Physical Sciences will now present candidates for the degrees of Master of Science and Doctor of Philosophy in programs in the Division of the Physical Sciences, as well as candidates for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy jointly with the Division of Biological Sciences and the Pritzker School of Medicine. Mr. President, these students have completed the program of studies prescribed by the faculty of the Division of the Physical Sciences and the special programs approved by their departments. I have the honor to present them as candidates for the degree of Master of Science. You have successfully completed a program of advanced study in the physical sciences. And by virtue of the authority delegated to me, I confer upon you the degree of Master of Science. And I express the hope that your learning will lead you to advance knowledge in or enrich the practice of your chosen field. Jing Yu He, Tian Yong Hu, Rachel Adriana Kalarki, Hiu Liu, Bo Luan, Jana Or Nugent, Jong Wang, Daniel Gregory Waters, Jinpu Yang, Yi Lin Zhang, Nuoya Ju. <laughs> Mr. President, each of the students I now present has attained scholarly distinction in advanced studies and has prepared a dissertation that contributes to knowledge in a particular field of research. On behalf of the faculty of the Division of Physical Sciences, I now have the honor to present them as candidates for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. By virtue of the authority delegated to me, I confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Philosophy and welcome you to this ancient and honorable company of scholars. Ka Chiang Lao. Yoan Potrion. The Dean of the Division of the Social Sciences will now present candidates for the degrees of Master of Arts and Doctor of Philosophy in programs in the Division of the Social Sciences. Mr. President, these students have completed the program of studies prescribed by the faculty of the Division of the Social Sciences and the special programs approved by their departments. I now have the honor to present them as candidates for the degree of Master of Arts. You have successfully completed a program of advanced study in the social sciences. And by virtue of the authority delegated to me, I confer upon you the degree of Master of Arts. And I express the hope that your learning will lead you to advance knowledge in or enrich the practice of your chosen field. Lauren Marie Ladine. Scamantis Potius, Andrea Lemoyne Walker, Yang Xiang. (laughs) 
Mr. President, each of the students I now present has attained scholarly distinction in advanced studies and has prepared a dissertation that contributes to knowledge in a particular field of research. On behalf of the faculty of the Division of Social Sciences, I now have the honor to present them as candidates for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. By virtue of the authority delegated to me, I confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Philosophy and welcome you to this ancient and honorable company of scholars. Maria Eugenia Balandran Castillo. Kamaya M. Jones. The Dean of the University of Chicago Booth School of Business will now present candidates for the degrees of Master of Business Administration in programs in the Booth School. Mr. President, these students have completed the program of professional studies prescribed by the faculty of the University of Chicago Booth School of Business. I now have the honor to present them as candidates for the degree of Master of Business Administration. By virtue of the authority delegated to me, I confer upon you the degree of Master of Business Administration, and I express the hope that your work will further wise choices in the allocation of economic resources for the benefit of all people. Darlene E. Acker. Sheyu Adeneron. Adeyanju, Dilip Adityan, Sheila Agarwal, Paul Ramon Albir, Ivan Alimov, Basil F. Alam, Marcus Vinicius Elvis Jr. Loe Abdelhamid Amin, Vivek Amin, Funader Anagonda, Jason Appleson, Elmira Askarova, Vinit Astana, Joel Elorm. Aitya Ayi, Kartik Balasubramanian, Tamas Ban, Lindsay Bishop Bartel, Meredith Strauss Baskis, Adam Bazi, Sergei Belenoshkov. Justin Elliott Berger, Catherine Harper Besser, Mikey Betscheider, Haito B, Manesh Kumar Bidasaria, Timothy Richard Binney, Olga Baradina, Nicoletta Bortan, Brian Keith Bretz, Marzena Sandra Zalcala, Mary Alice Burns, Donald Andrew Calcagni, Tyrika A. Cameron, Conrad Kaplan, Paulina Celedon Oliva, Jonathan Frederick Chait, Lang Xian Cheng, Diganto Chatterjee, Ivan Nikolov Chelebiev, Jing Chen, Dennis Chiang, 
Avinash Pemaya Chotangada, Rajaswar Vasantro Chowdhury, Byron Torben Clark, Alberto Javier Coloma Osebeo, Joseph Luke Bubakar Mari Correa, Catherine Bader Courtney, Cap Arrington Culver, Sean Patrick Daly, Sana Danish, Venkata Naga Ganesh Davoluri, Jonas de Kuman, Rene Philippe Jomo Dani Segi, Luis Eduardo de la Cerda Quinones, Nathan Andrew Day, Aziz Sharif Doze. Michael Patrick Duff, Jr. Glenn Jims Dummigan. Pierre Elisef. Alex L. Feld. Alexander Joseph Fergus II. Manuel Jose Fernandez Andoraga. George Stephen Fisher, Anthony James Fleming, Chi Wang Desmond Fu, Adam Christopher Fox, Zohar Naramanov, Robert Hayden Gallo, Samuel Noah Gallo, <laughs> Elena Gertzberg, Julie Gobin, Svetlana Goldstein, Boris Gutkin, Max Griminger, Ryan Lee Grukey, Finn Ryan Haley, Chin Kuang Han, William Edward Harmon, Robert L. Harrell III, Melissa Marie Harris, James William Heike, Christian Heim, Roxandra Mahela Hill, Torrance Larray Hinton, Gregory Thomas Edward Hodge, Jackie Hook, Peter Stephen Horos III, Tianyu Ho. Yun Hu, Zhao Hu, Stephen Michael Impink Jr., Edney Gula Inui, Chinmei Jane, Darren Scott Jenkins, Antoine Jennings, Yanping Jiang, Theodore Rudolph Kaler, Kusha Kamare, Jun Suk Kang, Vishal Vinod Kapoor, 
Alexandros Karamitsos. Nikolay Petrov Karatanev. Matthew Allen Kenstra. Hyung Jun Kim. James Y. Kim. Yu Sung Kim. Joe Cleven. Marcus Knobel. Richard G. Ko. Chakrapani Koduru. Amri Dan Kregel. Ravashankar Krishnan. Ulushigan Akindale Olaleyi Ladipo. Erica Marie Lankfer. Edward Lashinsky. Charles Conrad Lauders. Michael Saro Leblebijian. Louis Loki Lee. Stephanie Ann Lentz. Sunday Elaine Lewis. Fang Lee. Li Shen Li. Chuan Yang Lim. Jason Allen Lipes. Jun Lu. Yuo Ming Lu. Cosmin Lukachi Opria. Jessica Adele Madsen. Pallavi Mahajan. Jason Patrick Mahoney. Eric Maltair. Mansoor Mamadov. Andre Alexandrovich Marchenko. Jonathan Michael Marks. Catherine Ann Martin. Erez Shamer Maton. Sophia Madviva. James Thomas Mazursky. Andrew Kent McCrum. Sarah Elizabeth McAnini. Bertrand Migno. Agnesa Mignazzo. Svetlana Miranyuk. Christophe John Monger. Ali Hasnan Musvi. Jean Thomas Mraz. Barrett Nagpal. Rima V. Naimi. Cho Young Ung. Su Young Ung. Angelo Hong An Nguyen. <laughs> Fung Tai Nguyen. Odi Ghazi Odi. Megan Louise Opsal. Irie Mika Oshikanlu. Peter Dickens Pandula. Chanuk Park. 
Seung Park. So Young Park. Rashmi Ram Pasapula. Abhishek Pavar. Lindsay Shamel Payne. Elizabeth Jingchi Pang. Ali Pervez. Christopher Sterling Poole, Jr. Vladimir Potapov. M. Concepcion Prado. Niraj Prasad. Joshua Adam Rademacher. Yanis Rallis. Kiran Ramchandra Rain. Amprakash Rangabasham. Praveen Rao. Swati Ravirala. Matthew Vincent Render. Miriam Nyuera Reiru. Svetlana Skopchenko Rizzi. Alex F. Rodriguez. Lorenzo Romero. Cesar August Rossini. Anthony John Roth. Diego Moraes Ruiz. Virapat Rungsitam. Rajesh Sabaranath Sr. Federico Salinas. Barry Paul Sandal. Yota Sataki. Rebecca Schmidt. Kim Schneider. Bjorn Christoph Schwarz. Bradley Scott Schwer. Drove Saiti. Zishan Munib Sheikh. Santosh Venkat Shangargauda. Ishita Sharan. Shale Sharan. Alexi Shedrin. James J. Sheehan. Lei Shen. Takajiro Shimada. Bruno Luis Ferreira Silva. Alexandra Simich. Nathan Bradley Simmons. Iqbal Singh. Vikas Singh. Alexandra Soraco. Elias Vasilio Stambolis. Nicholas Stuta. Xing Su. Wee Song Suan. Tony Sullivan. Patrick Joseph Swint. Nicholas Eric Kuasi. Pooja Tarasia. Shu Tan. Ankur Tandon. Tao Tao. Stasis Terra. Samir Terry.
Sridhar Tatavarti. Ivan Chebiskov. David Terabesi. David Charles Thomas. Sean Erichthil Thomas. Prashant Tiwari. Tongvo Nak Tran. Dmitry Alexandrovich Trubnikov. Edward Louis Trudeau. Rajiv Tumala. Ivan Ulanitsa. Felix Verman. Pompinit Upatam. Vinay Shyamlal Varma. Erica Vasquez. Andrew Michael Verchoda. Rajesh Vanguru. Hannes Michael Wiebel. Eric Abraham Wharton. Scott Everett Willison. Eric Robert Williams. Derek Andrew Washtowitz. Christian Wolf. John Leland Wolford III. Eden Yi Dung Wong. Elgin Wamen Wong. Fuchi Wong. Justin Jipeng Xiao. Hen Jason She. Pung Yang. Chase M. Young. David E. Kin Kong Yip. Casey S. Yoon. Yuri Zabrutsky. Jin Jong. Yan Jong. Keegan Zimmerman. The Dean of the Divinity School will now present candidates for the degrees of Master of Divinity, Master of Arts, and Doctor of Philosophy in programs in the Divinity School. Mr. President, the student I now present is academically qualified to engage in the profession of ministry, having completed a course of study prescribed by the faculty of the Divinity School. I have the honor to present him as a candidate for the degree of Master of Divinity. By virtue of the authority delegated to me, I confer upon you the degree of Master of Divinity, and I express the hope that your work will contribute to a learned and effective ministry dedicated to the spiritual welfare of humankind. G. Abbas Chinoy. Mr. President, the students I now present have completed a program of studies prescribed by the faculty of the Divinity School for foundational education in the academic study of religion. I have the honor to present them as candidates for the degree of Master of Arts. 
You have successfully completed a program of advanced study in divinity. And by virtue of the authority delegated to me, I confer upon you the degree of Master of Arts. And I express the hope that your learning will lead you to advance knowledge in or enrich the practice of your chosen field. Samantha Claire Dunn. Chandra Eugenie Lamout. Mr. President, each of the students I now present have attained scholarly distinction in advanced studies and have prepared a dissertation which contributes to knowledge in a particular field of research in the academic study of religion. On behalf of the faculty in the Divinity School, I have the honor to present them as candidates for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. By virtue of the authority delegated to me, I confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Philosophy and welcome you to this ancient and honorable company of scholars. Timothy Mark Hiller. Richard Gerald Huskins. Kyle Gordon Rader. The Director of Student Affairs of the Irving B. Harris Graduate School of Public Policy Studies will now present a candidate for the degree of Master of Public Policy in Programs in the Harris School. Mr. President, this student has completed the program of studies prescribed by the faculty of the Irving B. Harris Graduate School of Public Policy Studies. I now have the honor to present him as a candidate for the degree of Master of Public Policy. By virtue of the authority delegated to me, I confer upon you the degree of Master of Public Policy, and I express the hope that your work will improve our understanding and the efficacy of public policy. Chen Liu. The Associate Dean of Students in the School of so Social Service Administration will now present candidates for the degrees of Master of Arts and Doctor of Philosophy in programs in the School of Social Service Administration. Mr. President, this student has completed the program of studies prescribed by the faculty of the School of Social Service Administration. I now have the honor to present her as a candidate for the degree of Master of Arts. By virtue of the authority delegated to me, I confer upon you the degree of Master of Arts, and I express the hope that your work will promote the welfare of individuals and the achievement of a socially just society. Huying Jin. <laughs> Mr. President, the student I now present has attained scholarly distinction in advanced studies and has prepared a dissertation which contributes to knowledge in a particular field of research. On behalf of the faculty of the School of Social Service Administration, I have the honor to present him as a candidate for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. By virtue of the authority delegated to me, I confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Philosophy and welcome you to this ancient and honorable company of scholars. Nucha Itzarawan. Sí, 
This is a special day for all of you upon whom I have just conferred a degree. And it is a special day for family and members and friends who may be here with you. It marks the completion of your study, or at least one phase of that study, a path that I trust has been challenging. I hope you're enjoying this moment of celebration and perhaps moment of reflection that this convocation affords. You are now all graduates of the University of Chicago. Because of your achievements that we celebrate here today with your family and friends, each of you will always be connected to the University of Chicago, a connection that I hope that you and we will foster for many years. The University of Chicago is an institution driven from its inception by an idea, an idea that one could create and continuously renew, renew a university focused on rigorous, intense inquiry and analysis. The university, through its work every day, expresses the view that clarity derives from the clash of ideas, the challenge of assumptions, and the willingness to accept answers only when they meet the tests of argument. We seek understanding that is complex, expandable, and fluid, rather than simple and rigid. An understanding that reflects analysis rather than ideology, that accepts complexity over the comfort of simplicity, that seeks to delineate both the power and limitations of argument, and that is always ready to incorporate new data which can emerge and which, in fact, must be sought. We believe that the best education, the most empowering education, and the most powerful learning take place in the environment of constant challenge that is implicit in this culture of rigorous inquiry, and that this culture is responsible for producing ideas of power and importance to humankind. This focus on rigorous inquiry has defined the University of Chicago, its research, and its education at all levels since the university's beginning, and it continues to do so today. The university and its culture are renewed every day by the work of its faculty, students, and staff. And while it is natural to focus on your own achievements today and what they mean for your future, you can also take great satisfaction in your contribution to the ongoing renewal of your university, the University of Chicago. I know that as graduates of this university, in the coming years, you will be called upon to act, to speak, and to lead. And like so many University of Chicago graduates who have come before you, you will approach this challenge of leadership empowered by your University of Chicago education. The power of analysis and ideas that you have experienced here and that are now your own will serve you well, whatever your path, whatever path you take and whatever challenges you confront. Each of you who received a degree today has received help and support from parents, family, spouses, partners, children, friends, mentors, or university faculty and staff. And while it is your achievements that we mark today, all of those supporters can rightly take great pride in your accomplishment. And so to all degree recipients, please accept my congratulations for all you have achieved. I wish you all good fortune and happiness in the years ahead. Enjoy your coming adventures wherever they may lead you. Congratulations.
This now concludes the 526th Convocation of the University of Chicago. Crescat scientia vita et culata. Let knowledge grow from more to more and so be human life enriched. <laughs>